You know, it's often been said that how you do anything is how you'll ultimately do everything. And uh, following the career of Rick Moliterno, you see a man committed to excellence and getting things done. And I stand in awe of all of you who've ever tried to accomplish anything. And the stories tonight absolutely inspire me and blow me away and, and just make me want to be a better human. And uh, Rick Moliterno is that guy as well. And he's from Iowa. And uh, I don't know what that means, but we're here in California, and it's just Iowa, and I love Iowa. So anyway, uh, let's watch the video for Rick. This is awesome, and uh, what a great deserved award for this fine man. Like so many BMX heroes from tonight's ceremony, our next Hall of Fame inductee could have easily been nominated in three other categories. He's been a racer. He's been a freestyle pioneer. And he's still an icon in the bicycle industry. In fact, he's even been a BMX actor. Truer words could not have been spoken. Iowa's Rick Moliterno has never been intimidated, and he's always gone for it. Honing his BMX chops at the many BMX tracks the Tri-Cities area offered, Rick had worked his way up into the AA Pro ranks when this new form of riding called freestyle burst onto the scene. Before he knew it, Rick was jumping cars and trucks and doing shows at the local bike shop, Bike and Hike, where he wrenched as a teenage mechanic. Then one day, while checking out a Hutch Freestyle show, Rick's riding caught the attention of Woody Itzen, who immediately hooked him up with a Hutch sponsorship. Before he knew it, Rick was touring the country and doing shows with the likes of Mike Dominguez. After receiving a better offer from Haro, he couldn't resist and began touring with a young Matt Huffman, along with factory legends like Ron Wilkerson and Brian Blyther. On the thriving AFA contest scene of the 80s, Rick's double-A pro mentality kicked in and he racked up the wins and titles. Whether it was flatland or ramps, Rick could shred and he went undefeated as an amateur in 1987 before turning pro. By the end of the 80s though, things were changing in the freestyle world. Sponsorships were drying up and the bikes and riding were evolving. With more emphasis on street and skate parks, Rick opened his own wooden ramp paradise, the Rampage, in 1989. Unsatisfied with the cheap mass market frames that were out there, Rick decided to start his own American-made rider-owned BMX brand. Standard Bikes was born and still thrives today as one of the last remaining American quality rider-owned companies. As the man in charge of Standard, Rick introduced threadless fork stem combos to BMX and to help sell the Standard brand, he opened Good Time Superstore in 1995. To help promote the brand, Rick has appeared in many videos, including the 2007 Standard DVD, Stronger Than All. Malagerno has literally done it all, a fact that was confirmed by Ride Magazine when they voted him as one of the top 25 most influential riders of the 90s. Nearly every morning before he begins work at Standard, Rick will kick off his day with a cup of coffee and a quick riding session at Davenport Cement Skate Park. Now in his 50s, his riding is still up to par with some of the best mini ramp shredders. And his baby, Standard Bikes, is still thriving strong. Please give a huge warm welcome to your 2018 early freestyle inductee, Rick Moliterno. Ah, uh, well, that pretty much was my whole speech, so thank you. <laughs> and uh, Debbie and Brian, same. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to read all this, but I'll try. And uh, first thing is, this, this is really, really cool. Like, so many people here are people that I highly, highly respect and have seen in BMX for 40-something years along this path. And uh, to stand up here and talk to you about that stuff is uh, harder than doing the riding. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, what about this ex outstanding class of riders for this year? This is really something else. 
I was really excited to be included with this crew. This is, it's, it's badass. Uh, oh man, this is gonna be hard to read. It must be age. All right. I really wanna thank my wife, Jessie, and the good friends here tonight. I consider all of you family, and I love all you guys, and I'm proud of all of you, and you all rule. Like, honestly, thank you for being here. Uh, my parents aren't here tonight, but I do want to say thank you, Mom and Larry. Uh, without your parents, you're not getting any start at all, and they've been very helpful all these years. And I want to say hello to my sister who's not here, Carrie, but she's watching. Um, well, when I sat down to reflect on my highlights from over the years, I realized that there really isn't a list of highlights. Basically, the whole thing is one giant highlight of 40 years plus in size and still growing. Like my entire experience of BMX has just been, I wouldn't have wanted to do anything else. This just rules, like I'm pumped. Um, of course, there's like some race wins, contest wins, countless road trips, tours, tricks pulled and business successes. Those are obvious highlights. But uh, looking back, almost every highlight and memory is anchored by the people that were involved at the time. People like my original racing bud for many years, Barry Ream. We turned pro together, raced our first double A main together. A lot of cool stuff happened with that guy. Uh, the owner of my first bike shop sponsor, Steve Dupron, he led me down the path of thinking about business, helped me get to races, gave me a full-time job at his bike shop. Um, that probably made me stay in BMX all this time with that help. Um, I come from very humble beginnings, um, and that was a big boost to getting me going. Um, from the job at Bike and Ike, we started a freestyle team after we started riding. And the guys that were involved with that, I really want to thank. Steve Rummins, Randy Warren, Chris Romeo, and Ron Goose. Such a great time doing our own freestyle team, sponsored by our local BMX shop. I think we did 200 shows before I ever joined the Hutcher Haro teams. It was, it was a time. As pro riders would tour through our town, we would get to meet some of some of the, the guys. Bob Haro, Arl Osborne, Ron Wilkerson, Rich Avella, Woody Itson and Donovan Ritter from the Hutch team, who gave my first major sponsorship and took me on tour. Touring. <laughs> what a time. The 80s. Dave Norrie and I were kind of talking about that a little while ago. Thanks for wearing a standard shirt tonight, Dave. You're, you're badass. The show era of freestyle was in full swing and somehow as a crazy kid from Iowa heading out on the road, still causing chaos and pushing my riding every day. Being on tour, you don't get to ride as much as you would think, but we still gave it a shot. When you ride Flatland with Woody Itson, as a hungry, aggressive, and competitive kid, you are going to either push yourself to get creative and improve your skills or get frustrated and want to quit. While the relationships on tour are tested almost daily, I was growing up. The experience from pro racing and the BMX bike business helped me see opportunity and not be afraid to take chances when they came along. If the Quad Cities is where my career in BMX was born, being on tour with Hutch was where I had to grow up. Being on that team at that time from a historical standpoint can seem overwhelming. Hutch was huge in racing. Guys like Tim Judge had made it iconic and the Hutch products and innovation was legendary, especially on the freestyle side with Woody and Mike Dominguez leading the way. Great people. Um, between Woody and Ron Wilkerson and Bob Harrow, I wouldn't have had the platform to launch Standard and some of the other things I did along with that. Thank you very much, you guys. Uh, good things don't last forever. I got the opportunity to move to Kansas City and eventually ride for Haro. I made the move, got to rise and ri ride and raise hell with the BMX Brigade, which included Brian Belcher and Dennis McCoy. 
Dennis and I spent countless hours riding and pushing the levels of flatland, but I'm pretty sure I owned him overall. I mean, I think he still drives the AFA pickup he won, but I wasn't pro then. <laughs> DMC. Ugh. Team Haro, <laughs> what can I say about these guys? Every one of them, if not already inducted, probably will be at some point from, from that era of the 80s. I was lucky enough to do shows and travel with all of them. Plus crazy announcers always added to the fun. I'm thankful for every second we all spent out there busting our asses and trying not to die in the Haro Panty van. Fun times, guys. I think that van burned in Iowa, by the way. <laughs> then back in Iowa, after a downturn in the industry, working a job, no more tours, pile of broken bike parts, maybe a half dozen people in the whole state still riding at the time, opening a skate park with my old friend Steve, Ro Steve Romans seemed like the obvious thing to do. Open a skate park. <laughs> Let's try to build an empire and live off two seemingly dead industries. All right. All right. <laughs> Thankfully, that wasn't the mindset looking back. Rampage Skate Park was a thing that for 16 years kept the scene alive in our area, helped support and grow other businesses, and brought together BMX riders from all over the world. Rampage is one of the things that I've done that I'm most proud of where I've affected a lot of people. I'm super pumped on that part of my life. Um, two of those riders that would come from all over were Kurt Schmidt and Bill Nitschke. They joined with myself to start Standard Bike Company in 1991. I have to thank those guys because without those two and myself joining forces, we wouldn't have done it. It wouldn't exist. Thank you, guys. We ran Standard out of a small back room at Rampage while living together in a house with legendary riders and other house guests such as Jeremy Verholz and Rick Wagner, who I'm still friends with today. Great people. Thanks, JV. These guys, plus many others, contributed to the growth of the company as well as our style and attitude. We rolled deep wherever we went. We tended to ruffle feathers and have a no press is bad press attitude. Mostly because we didn't have a lot to sell at the time, except pegs and t-shirts. That doesn't really take you too far. Over time, we connected with Waterford Precision Cycles. Waterford was known for quality bicycle frames and they helped us innovate and elevate our products for 16 years. In those 16 years, we built a huge team and group of riders, designers and artists that have gone on to great accomplishments both on and off their bikes, like many people here. You guys are awesome. Today, we still maintain a great team of riders and supporters that we appreciate. In 2008, we took the gamble of building the bikes ourselves in-house. With the help of Rob Southwick, whose dad, Bob, made our first prototype 16 years earlier, we were up and running in no time. We now run very efficiently with our small in-house crew. It's just three of us, myself, my wife, Jessie, and Steve. We build them, she sells them. <laughs> it wouldn't be run as smooth without the behind the scenes help from my good friends, Sean Murphy, Jared Glasgow, Chris Bradley, and Wade Arnold. We appreciate them more than they know. I wanna give a shout out to Michelle Carnes yeah. as the first standard rider to be in inducted into the BMX Hall of Fame. She was inducted in 2016, and we still refer to her as, as the champ of everything. BMX has been many things in my life, but what it has allowed me to do with and for others is the most rewarding part. It's always about the people. The fans and friends, the people I'll never meet, the kids that came to the skate park, watched a video, picked up a bike, the ones who took what we built and made it their own, the ones who applied the do-it-yourself, sometimes in spite of yourself, BMX attitude, and applied it to their lives, their art, music, movies, and their families. That's the stuff that I want to remember and how I would hope to be remembered 
not for the trophies and tricks, but for the failures and successes that, that help inspire the next generation of kids without a direction the way that BMX has inspired me. While living this life in BMX, the most rewarding thing is the amazing people whose contributions have made it all possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.